you are an entrepreneur, a professional, a speaker, or a coach, and although you've come a long way, it's time for you to take it to the next level. We've got you. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. We'll help you use authority and influencer marketing to build your business stronger and faster by publishing a book. You'll hear from guests that are thought leaders in sales, marketing, networking, communication, social media, promotion, and business leadership. Let's do it. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. And now your host, the extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today, if you are looking to change your life, get out of the sea of conformity, the ocean of oneness, if you want to stand out in the crowd and be noticed so that you can build your business bigger, better, stronger, and faster, then today's episode is for you. I would love to welcome Bridget Norris. She's a game-changing leadership coach who uses a conscious and ethical approach to help her clients achieve success in both their businesses and personal lives. She's known for her straight-talking, no-nonsense approach and her weekly community, The Revolt Weekly, which serves as a support group for rule-breaking individuals looking for inspiration, guidance, and real talk. Bridget is a leader of a revolution, and her community is filled with like-minded individuals ready to break free and create something extraordinary. Welcome to the show, Bridget. Oh, thank you. That was amazing. Oh, you know what? Everyone tells me that that I just introduced them so well. And can I share a secret with the audience? <laughs> yeah, right. Bridget wrote every word of that. I was just reading it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Me too. Bridget, since this is your first time on the Author to Authority podcast, I would love for you to just take a few minutes and just kind of share your business story. Like, where did you come from and, and how did you, you know, develop into a revolution? Oh, goodness. So for me, uh, I think if I go back to, I started in corporate and I kind of have always been that person that pushes back. So not only did I start in corporate, I was in construction which is an industry where most women, you know, when I started, were like, why are you here? What are you doing? And I kept pushing and wanting more and more and more. And of course, I got pushed back with, you can't do this. You can't do that. And you don't understand. So I continue to rise in, in corporate in that and really, really got to a level that I could have done more. And then I got married and my son was five years old. And I'm like, what do I want to do? Do I want to continue to work a million hours in corporate because that's what success looks like? Or do I want to spend some time raising my son? And, you know, my husband was like, you choose. So I chose to raise my son. And then the funny part about this is, which is great. I would never regret that. He turned 13, I think it was. And one day I realized he doesn't need me anymore. He's like, mom, you don't need to pick me up. Mom, I don't want to hang out with you. And I'm like, whoa. So my whole life just crashed into that moment. It was like, what do I do with myself? (laughs) Yes. And that is when each boyhood where now mom's embarrassing. Oh my God. Yes. Please don't pick me up. Please don't, you know, I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to do any of that stuff. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. So what is my life at this point? And that is basically what started the evolution of me trying to figure out what I was going to do. And when I tell you I've done everything I have done probably seven network marketing companies. And let's just make it real. I I suck at that, which is why I figured it out. It only took me seven tries, but, and I got to the point where I realized, and and I think this is a lot of missing piece for a lot of people that want to do a business or maybe are in a business and they're not understanding why you're not being successful is there's a certain part of, I was trying to eliminate what I was successful in corporate on and not utilize it in my business because I didn't think it applied. And I think that was the missing piece the whole time. I was not really looking at my strengths and understanding it. So that's kind of the evolution of getting here in a nutshell, in a very short nutshell. (laughs) Love what you just said there about not looking at your strengths. I was in several network marketings over the course of probably about 20 years and never really saw any level of success. Now, 
In the last couple I was in, I did learn some really good lessons that served me well as I moved forward. But one of the things that I realized was my strength was in being me and not trying to be somebody else. I I wasn't a corporate person, right? I, I stayed at home all the years, except for, well, there was a year and a half that I worked outside of the house because they had canceled JK. And my daughter was so upset that she cried every day that she didn't get to go to junior kindergarten, that I got a job so I could afford to put her in daycare so she would think she had something. Because she cried every day because there was no junior kindergarten. I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, especially when most kids are like, please don't send me to school. (laughs) So, but the only way I could do that was I had to go to work so we could afford to do it. So I, I worked outside the home. I did also drive school bus for three years, but that was, that was kind of in the home and out of the home because I worked when they were in school and I didn't work when they weren't in school. So I I totally understand where you're coming from there. And I think that what you said there was important is you've got to, you've got to create this business. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with network marketing. If network marketing is your thing, go for it. But if not, then that doesn't make you a failure at entrepreneurship. It just means you haven't found, you haven't found what you're looking for. What that song used to say, right? I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And, (laughs) It took me a long time to find what I was looking for. But now that I have, you know, it was worth the journey. I 100% agree. And I think that's the, and I say this in the in the fashion of, you know, my son is 24 now. So understanding like where I'm at in age and where he's at in age and understanding the process. And now I can this far along say like, it's just the season and understanding that every phase you're going through is just a season of life mm-hmm. that I essentially look at that there's a lesson in each one of those seasons. It's just what yes. you choose to keep doing with it. And I agree a hundred percent. There's nothing wrong with network marketing. If you're, it's what you love and you're good at it. I mean, by all means, it's an amazing way to support a family and stay at home. I I'm totally with that. Yeah. Yeah. My, my kids are 29 and 31 and I am Nana to, to two. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> two boys. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm already. You twice. know what? <laughs> Being a grandparent is like, the reward for everything that you went through in raising your kids. Hmm. I can see that. I can see that. I spoil my, my goddaughter and because I had a son and I didn't have a daughter, I spoiled the heck out of her. And it's like all the things that her mom is saying, Oh, don't, don't sell, don't tell her that. I'm like, I'm telling her that we're doing that. <laughs> well, I can't say I spoil my grandkids. Cause I, I, we always found it really frustrating when we were trying to put rules and schedules in place and the grandparents are like, Oh, we're just going to break all your rules. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not doing me any favors and you're not doing your grandkids any favors. Right. So we always respect rules and schedules, but yes, we do shower them with lots and lots and lots of love. I love it. <laughs> so Bridget, I know you come prepared today to talk about breaking the mold and how to be a rebel in the sea of conformity. So I want to give you some time just to share what you've prepared, and then we'll we'll talk a bit about it. So the the fun part about this is I'm actually going to get to so the revolt is, is created out of my own personal revolt. I actually have been a you know rebel nonconformist my entire life. I moved out of my house when I was 12 just because I knew that that was what I was good for me and 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 it's the crazy part of it and I got through my entire life I got until I got to the online space and I allowed that space to force me into conforming in which is why I was miserable, which is why I failed at a lot of things, which is why I you know got disgusted with social media. It was just a whole cycle that keep kept repeating itself. And I finally sat down and said, what, what do I need to do here? And then word revolt came. I'm like, I need to revolt against all of this. And I looked at it and I'm like, this is it. This is my own personal revolt. And I put, I put myself through it. And on the other side of it, holy crap, this is amazing. I want to give this to as many people as possible. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through. I mean, I take people through basically a five-step kind of a process. Um, and a lot of it taps back into really understanding. It's not just strengths and understanding who you are. We start with like I, what I call black sheep values because I was always the black sheep of the family. So, but it's core values at, at its heart. People to pull out the black sheep part because there's always a piece of you 
that uniqueness is different and we like to coin it as something. So I'm like, what is that? And, and usually when we sit and we pull the strings, we usually, usually find something down there, which is usually the fun. Mm. And then we step into strengths and I'm a big uh, proponent of Clifton strengths. I use that. I use how to fascinate I the psychology behind all of those tests and how mm. we look at those and then look at our lives and who we are and kind of create, um, you know, DNA of our business, the DNA of who we are coming from that strength and really creating a movement. I'm, I'm more about helping you create a movement versus a business mm-hmm. legacy that you can create within that is, is a much deeper with. And then my favorite part about it is that is finding your disruptor point of view. And we all have a disruptor point of view. And <laughs> the biggest thing that I find with women is that they're scared. They know what their disruptor point of view is, is they're just scared to say it out loud and so giving them the space to say it out loud and re- accepting it and then having them hone it and really own it is like mm-hmm. that's the most fun part for me because I love to hear it. I'm like the, I, I, of everyone, I probably could have been an attorney in my life because I love to argue. So I'll argue with you until you're blue in the face until I finally find. And then it's like the light bulb moment goes off, moment goes off. When you know what your point of view is, you, the whole thing, the whole part of your business shifts And doing it your way is the only way you can do it. Nothing else makes sense anymore and nothing feels good anymore. And that's it. I mean, that is the process. It's simple of um, deep uh, willingness to go deep in the work. And I think inherently we're, we're consuming a lot of information and we don't really spend the time to really look at ourselves internally. Like, I mean, how much of a, how many of you a a zillion mindset classes, masterclasses, read a million mindset books, the other uh, okay. Yeah, that resonates. But what do I do now? It's, it's what do I do? And the, the people that are ready for taking action, because, I, you know, well, like the no sense approach, if you're not willing to do the work after the work, there's no sense in working with me at all. Cause I'm going to push. And I have a million ideas for people, which is, this comes from my business aspect, but I, I have no problem giving you a zillion ideas, but if you are not willing to take the idea around and go to work. There's no point like, at the end of the day. What are we doing? Exactly. You know, I love that you're wording about the disruptor and I did a different way. Um, I've always described it this way. You've got to know what type of cup of tea you are and not everyone's going to like your cup of tea, but there is a specific group of people who are going to love your cup of tea. And think, you know, Being having that differentiator is so crucial in terms of building a business. And and you are correct. Like women are afraid to stand out and say, this is where I shine. This is, this is my super. And I think once you can do that, your business really changes when you can say, you know, here's my disruptor. I'm this cup of tea or leave it. And the next part, the next part, this was, this is what changed completely was I got to the point where I didn't care anymore if people didn't let the tea. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean I didn't care about the people who didn't like me. I still care about people, but no longer was I emotionally itched to whether they liked me or not. I, I could just be me. And if you don't like me, ah, that's okay. You don't want, like what I do. That's fine, too. You know, I'm yeah. a tea. Hey, that's great. There's a lot of other cup of teas out there. And I'm, you know, I wish you the best in finding the cup that works for you. Yeah, right. 100%. And, and when you can hit that point, it's so freeing and it allows you to build the business you want because you no longer have these everyone. You can just yeah, I think tea people enjoy you. I think the the even beyond the aspect for me, myself going through it and knowing the process and then and putting other women through it, it's also like, it's like they, you know, they've said like, my shoulders just relax and just be, it's like personally a relief, a release of saying, this is just okay. And it's going to be okay. You know, it, and what I, you know, what I'm putting out there and what I'm going to say, maybe it's going to take a little time for me to find the people that enjoy my tea, but that's okay. What's not okay is agreeing with things that you don't agree with showing up in a way that's not you and trying to create a business that you think everybody wants. Yeah, that is not what people want nowadays. We've seen too much of that over the last five years. We've seen too much of the same and ever craving something different. You are the different, you know, there is no other you. So 
own it and how can you show that? Like, what does that look like for a business? Because we all within us that we are inherently great at that. We know, you know, for me, I, I mean, I know how to be a, know how to be a rebel. Like I, I, that's who I am. So how do I take that and turn that into a business? That's what I figured out. And that's what mm-hmm. I want women to figure out. You, you have it already. Let's just yeah. pull it out. Let's and be willing out there. Yeah. Like, you know, it's funny you said that because, you know, when I decided, well, sure, I had a lot of different that I could go, but I decided I was going to be different publishers because I didn't want to go the same route that everybody else did. And the, the, you know, I work with very high level thought leaders, right? And these are people who are using their book to build their business. So I made the decision very early on that I wasn't going to be like every other publisher. I hold no copyrights, no rights whatsoever to any of the books that we have published through RTI Publishing. They are all fully, the rights are fully owned by the clients. And the reason I did that was they need, if they're using this book to build their business, they need to be able to do what they need to be able to do without having to go through me to get permission to do what they need to do to use the book to build their business. And I was like, I don't. That, that was not the route I wanted to go. I don't want to hold the rights. I want to free these people to use books to build their business. And it's the same. I take no royal books either, right? Wow. Like you pay me, you pay me well for what I do. But after that, it's not, not looking, you know, to make money. If you're selling the book, then you should be getting all those yourself. Yeah, like, that, 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 that is, that's amazing, first of all. Um, and I think that, Owning that part of like, it, that's probably to, you know, and I don't know anything about the publishing world, but to other publishers, you're probably like the black sheep of the world. Like, whoa, don't do that. Why would you say that? But I like, hello. <laughs> well, you know, they've, they've all told me, well, you're leaning on the table. Maybe I am. But the thing is that by being, t- I am now more active than yes. other companies that keep sucking money out of them afterwards. I have, you know, 80% of my business referred. I mean, I still generate leads. I still generate new clients and all that. But my clients so appreciate what I do that they are constantly in business because I mean, I'm different. Doesn't get any better than that. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's like the the idea of understanding what it means to be a conscious and ethical business person that looks different for everyone. But at the end of the day, at the end of the night, when you look at yourself in the mirror to wash your face, it's you you're looking at. It's you that has to be in integrity with what you want and just something because everyone else is doing it. And when it's that integrity who you are, that that to me that that is the worst place in business. Oh, I agree. Because like there was a time when I was trying somebody else and I was miserable. Like I was so miserable. And because it was so not me, I wasn't getting any results either because I couldn't I couldn't pull it off. Like I just couldn't do it. Like oh my God. I am not, I am not into, you know, cause I'd have people trying to t- sell and, and, you know, manipulation tactics and all this. Now I have no problems over, but I don't manipulate to do it. Yeah. Right. And I'm not going to bully people into buying my products. If yeah. I'm a tea, here's a few other people I know that are trusters I, and and to be honest, I have turned down this. I, I had a situation once where I can't give too many details, but I had a situation where a person in a level of authority wanted me to book. And when we got talking about the book, uh, they were very impressed with me. They wanted to hire me. But the topics that they wanted to come book morally and ethically and spiritually, I, I could not write them. I could yeah. not. And I had to be full because if I turned this person down the way, there could have been some very serious responses. And that's why I believe in prayer. Cause I was like, Oh God, you, you've got words to say the correct words to say, but I had to turn this person down. Like morally, I, I could not write that book. Like I would not be able to live with myself or look myself in the mirror. Like you said, if I wrote that book and I had to turn that person down, now, I carefully thought through that question, <laughs> add it, uh, I, I'm good. 100%. Like, to me, yeah. no, amount, no amount of money is, 
me going against what I morally, ethically, or spiritually believe. No, I, I had that same first business coach that I hired when I first started was like, okay, right up this is you know, and you you get and you you get a program, you get some oh, okay, now you should be charging like ten thousand dollars. And I'm like, no, like why would I do that? And they're like, well, because I mean that's what you should charge. I mean, if you want to make, you know, ten thousand dollars what you and I'm like, I'm not that is not who I am. That is not what I, I hear within this business, within how I want people to, you know, I don't even want to say in the like work off the backs of them that they're just struggling to try to make it work. Like I want to help them make it work, be successful, and hopefully they move on and surpass me. That's just who I am. So you're not going to be able to force me into doing something that I don't want to do. And I think there's a lot of that going on in, you know, five, six years ago when, when I started, it's, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. And now I see even that, how manipulative that was. It's because so that they could keep charging the ridiculous prices that they were charging. And we just created this cycle of never really helping the people need the help. Yep. You know, like I believe in having different levels for different people. Like right now I've got very high end services. So in the next year or so I'm looking at, you know, ways I can serve people who can't afford my high end services. So that's something in the works. But as a solopreneur, there's only so much I can do at a time. So I have to be ready to be able to implement these things properly so that people don't fall through the crack. And yes. but I, I agree. Like I charge well, mind you, I mean, there's a lot that goes into publishing, right? Uh, but my my goal isn't to certain amount of money. You know, I need to cover my cost. I do need to make some money. So all my pricing is based on that. But it's not, money's not the motivation for me. Yes. Okay. And that's oh, a hard yeah. concept for people to understand right there because they say you're in a business to make money. And I have to express to them, yes, your business has to make money. But that doesn't mean because everybody online says I'm making seven figures. If that is not what you want and where you want to go and the idea of success that you have or the work that you put into it, then don't do it. You don't have to do that. Yeah. And, and the the thing is, is that, you know, obviously you can't run the boss. Oh. Right. I have to feed my family, pay my bills, maybe even take a vacation once a year. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's not, that, not the goal. You know, right. money tool that I use. Exactly. To I want. But not the goal. You can see behind me. That's just a small sampling of some um, I have published or have been in. And, you know, that's the goal for me is to create books that change people's lives. Yeah, that that's what makes it worth it for me is when that book is published. And, you know, most times most people don't know that I ever worked on it. And that's that's fine. Though, you know. But a lot of times they do acknowledge me. So that's good too. But the thing is, is that when I start reading the reviews and and the client comes back and tells me, you know, about how this book has changed some, someone's told them how much this book has changed their life. That is what makes it for me. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I don't need the, you know, the, the, you to post a million things about me online so that people are then attracted to me. You know, I've heard the, you know, a little bit, um, I'm a little bit different in the aspect of, you know, people that I worked with three years ago, four years ago, uh, just because you're not paying me anymore. If you reach out to me, I'm not the person I, I love. What do you yeah. need? If it's just a quick message. We're talking. I gain, you know, that type of relate. I prefer that type of relation. People. Me too. And I love the fact that they're willing to come back to me three or four years later and say, oh my God, like, this is what's happening to me right now. This is amazing. And I'm like, that's all I need. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I stay in touch with my clients. Now, yeah. mostly through social media, it's easy, right? They're posting stuff. I'm making comments, you know, we'll message back and forth on the occasional call in that. But, you know, you hit the, you hit the nail on the head. It's the release. Yep. And I it's, think that that's a lacking piece. And when everybody, you know, if you're a, a business owner now that's looking like your idea of success is to scale, maybe it is, you know, multiple six figures or seven figures. That's amazing. But take a look at the people that you might be and is it exactly what they're doing, what you want to do? Because most of them, most of the ones that I know, 
no longer have very limited access to the people anymore. They have people that do everything. So the, the figurehead type of business that you want, you just want to be like, oh, you know, I'm on the outside and you deal with all of my, you know, minions, or do you really want to be the soul of it? And I think that there's a big difference in that. And can you still make seven figures and be the soul of it? hundred percent. It's going to take work and you have to still have a team, but decide, you know, what that looks like. Because mm-hmm. for me, I didn't sell out the relationships for seven year dollar business, it, that's just not me. That's not what I would do. And it's in your heart, just because other people are doing whatever they're doing does not mean you have to follow them. And it doesn't make you less successful. Do it differently. All I want to say is amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the crux of today's episode is it's business. Build it in the way that fulfills you. Financially, but also emotionally. Yes. You know, relationships for me are important. They have always have been. That's that's my strength is the relationships that I develop with people, you know, pouring into their lives. One of the reasons why I keep in touch with my clients is because there's things that I've learned I want to share with them. Okay, here's a new way to, you know, promote your book. Let's look at what you're doing. How can we get you out there more, right? Like, let's have those conversations. Now, I'm not a marketer, as per se, but things. And so, you know, if we can sit down together and and I can help you move your business forward and, you know, your book was published to you, care because it's relationships. 100%. Yeah. We need more of that. We need, we need, um, you know, untouchable, unreachable gurus and, and more human relationship connection. I think it's, and I think people are finally like, un, yes. like at that space where enough and and that's why we're seeing, you know, like why, you know, the revolution on, on every level, your own, your own revolution, you know, the way you have a revolution published, everybody is like ready for, it. so I'm, I'm ready for everyone's revolution. Show me that. Like, let's just change everything. <laughs> Bridget, this has been awesome. So what I would love for you to do is share a final thought. And if people have enjoyed today's episode, how could with- uh, connecting with me is easy. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, it's just Bridget Norris, which is B-R-I-D-G-I Norris. Um, I'm mostly on Facebook. My son tells me I'm too old to be on Instagram. I do go there, but I don't spend a ton of time there. So you could flee on. Um, um, really, I think in order to stand out in any industry, in your industry, when you just, you really, you really have to be willing to become the disruptor based on your personality, your purpose, your promise, and that your business will flourish. But I think even your emotional mentally are going to be far better than you ever thought you could be. The, the, re, the feeling of that is like nothing. Experience. And even cha-ching in the bank account doesn't give you that feeling that you feel inside. When- and I've said it better. Audience, if you've loved today's uh- episode do you know someone else who would love it like are you thinking about that person right now who absolutely needs this Hear it out because you can make the difference in somebody else's life by sharing out episodes that you know are going to be helpful to someone else so this has been bridget norris and kim thompson pinder on the author to authority podcast thanks so much for listening and we'll see you on the very next episode now You've been listening to the Author to Authority Podcast. The extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder, has helped over 200 entrepreneurs, professionals, speakers, and coaches write and publish their books that have become incredible marketing tools for their business. And many of those have gone on to become Amazon best-selling authors and have used their books to land high-level clients and get on big stages. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at www.author2authoritypodcast.com. See you next time.